Giving birth isn't easy. There's a reason it's called labor after all. But in Uganda, it's a life and death struggle. She's 16 years. She was in primary six and she conceived and death dropped out of school. Early labor pains are the least of this girl's problems. The teacher, her teacher, is the father. Oh, mommy. Does anything happen to these teachers who impregnate students? Well, definitely it's unethical for teachers to, 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 to mm. have sexual relations with their students. But it happens and if found out, uh, definitely they have to face that law. Not an uncommon story in Uganda, a place where girls grow up fast, and maternity wards are filled with tragic stories. Uh, so she's, uh, she's 18 years. This is her first pregnancy. But she will leave this place with empty arms. But because she first tried to push from the village, then went to, after failing, she went to a health center nearby, which didn't have uh, uh, services for cesarean section, and then by then she was referred here. It was too late, but the life is saved. At least this is good. The reality is, giving birth will be the riskiest thing a woman will ever do here, more deadly than any virus or disease. With the average Ugandan woman having seven children, the stakes are high. But the silent killer often goes unnoticed, and the stories of these women are buried with them. Last night, Sophia bled to death, giving birth to her ninth child, a condition that's very common among women who die from childbirth. What will happen with that ninth child? Likely an orphanage. The whole community has come together to mourn. As sad as this occasion is, what's more tragic is her death could have been prevented if she got to the hospital in time. Every mother counts. Every mother is important. Dr. Jean Chamberlain Froze is trying to break the deadly silence surrounding maternal mortality wherever she can, including this funeral. And though she may stick out, the Canadian obstetrician has made Uganda her home. Saving its mothers is her mission. But getting there is a rough road, full of obstacles. Driving on the left side of the road takes a little bit of practice, but you get used to it after a while. Dodging the potholes is the second step that you need to learn how to handle here. These ones are the general patients, the general part of it, not okay. HIV. Right. Okay. Health centers are few and overcrowded. At this clinic, blood work is done under a tree next to a busy, dusty street. This government-run hospital is no better. Among the hundreds who come here, there's only one rickety trolley to transport them. Patients are expected to bring their own gloves, linens, and even nurses. Yeah, the two beds are not enough because at the times you get three or four mothers delivering at the same time. Still, it's a woman's best chance at survival and much better than the alternative. This is where most women come to give birth. This is the oldest book. Traditional birth attendants are rural, cheap, and have been doing the job for centuries. And that's part of the reason so many mothers are dying. She's obviously had some training how to give injections, um, which again is, is far more than most uh, TBAs, but again, being in a hot place without this medicine being in the fridge, um, one would wonder about um, its efficacy. This TBA has some tools of the trade, like a fetoscope but no running water or electricity. Tools can only detect problems, not resolve them. The problem is, when a complication arises, every minute counts. Getting to the hospital is the next challenge. To understand why so many women die in Uganda giving birth, you really don't need to look any further than the street. This is a typical road in Uganda, showing that transportation remains one of the biggest obstacles to safe motherhood. Lack of health resources and access to them is only part of this unnecessary scourge. Social traditions remain the biggest barriers for mothers. Most are pressured to have their babies at home. So one of these books is going to say challenges in safe motherhood. That's why Dr. Chamberlain Froze's focus isn't on medicine, but education. The students of the Save the Mothers program are Ugandan professionals, politicians, teachers, journalists and community workers who are shattering the myths 
via the most powerful weapon in their arsenal, influence. There's that feeling, the cultural feeling that um, if you die in childbirth, it's bad luck. Oh, you must have done something wrong when you are pregnant, or you must have harmed someone somewhere, or, or someone must have cursed you. Catherine Miswigwa is features editor of Ugandan's largest daily, The New Vision. Even she didn't know how big the problem was until she took the program. At first I thought it was death like any other death. You can't prevent it if it's to happen. But now I realize that that this doesn't happen everywhere in the world. Lack of awareness runs both ways. The issue of maternal mortality has been eclipsed by other causes in the developing world, even though the numbers are staggering. That's why reducing maternal death is one of the UN Millennium Development Goals. Sadly, it's barely budged since governments made their pledges. In the meantime, there are a few players in the Ugandan parliament who've taken on the fight. Save the Mother's graduate and MP, Sylvia Sinabulia. We are moving towards 2015, where uh, countries pledged to reduce maternal mortality by three quarters. So the roadmap are steps which are being taken along the road. You find that the contribution of uh, young girls to Maternal mortality. Sinabulia has become an ambassador for safe motherhood. As a mother of four, she knows the challenges these women face. She's had two high-risk deliveries in this hospital. So is this for you, or you? Yeah, this is, uh, this is where I had my, all my four children from. This hospital? Yeah, 14, I had my last one 14 years ago. <laughs> and I, 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 used, I used to, uh, when I'm telling my story, yeah. two of my children were breech deliveries. Mm -hmm. Sinabulia knows the power of telling stories. That's why she takes the time to hold these girls' hands as they tell theirs, hoping these tragedies won't be repeated, knowing likely they will. Still, Dr. Chamberlain Froze is seeing signs of life, and her mission is no longer her own. That's why she's committed to invest in today and tomorrow's leaders. It's a labor of love, one that's far from over. Ha, 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 ha.